Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. We will continue with class three. A loop is a JavaScript procedure that runs a block of code over and over again. We have two predominant types of loops. One is called a for loop, and a for loop will loop through a block of code a specified number of times based on what that number might be. A while loop, on the other hand, will loop through a block of code while a condition is true. So it will, as long as that condition is true, it will continue to run. So we're looking at the ability to execute some code over and over again. A for loop involves four different components. A counter variable, a conditional statement, an increment, and some code that is executed for each loop. So let's take a look at the syntax of a for loop, a very commonly used loop, by the way. All right, we always start with a, a variable, and a lot of times programmers use the letter i. Now that var i can be declared outside of the for loop, or it can actually be declared inside the parentheses. So here we have the for keyword, followed by parentheses. So this is our condition, so to speak. All right, now we always start out with what is called the counter variable. Most commonly, we initialize it to zero. So here we have i equals zero. Notice the semicolon. Now we have our condition. i is less than five. So as long as i is less than 5, we will continue this loop. Next we have the increment. Remember last week we looked at the plus plus operator. And what that does, that adds 1 to the current value of i. Notice that there is no semicolon at the end of the parentheses. Similar to the if statement, the for loop is followed by a block an open, a opening and closing curly braces, and inside those curly braces is the code that is executed for each loop. You might hear the term iteration. So we're going to iterate or loop through this code for so many times based on the condition, and the number of times is determined by our counter. All right, so let's take a look at how we might use this. Here we have var for our for loop, and notice now I have the var inside, and I'm actually declaring and initializing right away. Var i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than five, semicolon, i plus plus. Notice there is no semicolon after the um, i plus plus. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to execute the code. I will use document.write. And I am concatenating my string literal, the number is. By the way, this is a very good way of testing things. Concatenating with that, with the variable i, which will be holding different values. Concatenating that with a break. So essentially, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be writing to the page, the number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to actually have five statements, starting at 0, ending with 4. All right, so here's how this loop works. First time around, var i equals 0, and we don't increment it really until the second time. That's just the way it works. All right, so the first time around, i is 0. Is i less than 5? Yes, it is. All right. Now, let us execute the code in the curly braces. We're going to put a, a statement on the web page. The statement will read, the number is 0. All right, second time around. Now, um, what, what is the value of i at this point? Now i, not, now I has incremented. All right, so technically it's incrementing when, when we leave the, when we start again. 
All right, now i is 1. Is i less than 5? Yes, it is. All right, so we're going to execute the statement. The statement will say the number is 1. Second time around, third time around. Now i is 2. We're going to increment it. All right, the value is 2. Is it still less than 5? Yes, it is. All right, so now we're going to write again. And we'll do that for two more times. Up until the point where the value of i is 4. All right, at that point when we were to increment that, it would not be less than 5 anymore, so the loop would stop at that point. So it would write the number is 0 all the way up to the number is 4 on the web page. We also have what is called a while loop. A while loop gives us some kind of a conditional statement that must be true at least once. Here again, code will be executed for each loop as long as that condition statement is still true. The increment is literally at the bottom. Now, just a word of caution. If the condition statement is always true, then you will never exit the loop. So just watch out for that. It could, in the years ago, it could have crashed your computer. All right, so the while loop evaluates the condition and it continues to loop as long as the condition is true. It will stop when the condition is false. So let's take a look at our code. Here we have var i equals zero. Here again, it could have been written inside the parentheses after while. So now we have the while keyword. Inside is our condition, i is less than five. Here we have the code to be executed, the same code I'm writing I used in the last example. Now here our increment operator is actually located here, i++. So we start out with i being 0, then we increment it to 1. All right, so now we, we go through the loop again. While i is less than 5, it's the value is 1. Yes, the condition is still true. We execute the code again. All right, third time around, i equals 2. Is it still less than 5? Yes, it is. And we'll do that until i is 4. And then when we increment that, it will increment to 5, which is no longer less than 5, and the loop will stop. We also have what is called a do while loop. And the do while loop will always run once, even if it's not true. <laughs> All right, the reason for that is, is the condition is at the bottom of the loop. This is just the way it runs. All right, so let's take a look at our code. var i equals zero. There's the do. And inside our curly braces, we're gonna execute the code. All right, so we're starting out with initializing zero, and then we're gonna inc increment it after we write, after we execute some code. So as I said earlier, it's always gonna run once, so you will always be executing code, at least once. Now it's because the condition's at the bottom, while i is less than 5. And if i is less than 5, in this case it's 1, because we just ran through it, then it will run again. But if it wasn't, if that condition was false, it would stop, but the code still would have been executed. The ternary operator. This is actually a very cool way of doing an if. Uh, if this is here again, this is not in the book. You may see it out there on, in, on the web, and I'd like you to know, know about it. All right, before we look at the code block on the right, let's look at the code block on the left. Here we have a, a var a equals 5, b equals 3. If a is less than b, we're going to execute something if it is true. Else, we're going to execute something if it is false. So what the ternary operator is, is a shorthand way of writing an if-else statement. Only good for if-else. All right, so let's take a look on the right-hand side. Here we have the same var variables, a equals 5, b equals 3. Rather than using the if state word, keyword, we just have a condition, a is less than b. And now we have this question mark, which is called the ternary operator. So, 
if the condition evaluates to true the first block of code following the question mark will be executed. If the condition to be evaluated executes the false, the code following the, quest the colon will be executed. So this is the way the ternary operator works. If it's true, we execute one, this one. If it's false, we execute that one. Is not a number. And notice the way it is spelled. That is the case. It is a JavaScript function. I believe the textbook calls it a method. Don't worry. They're pretty much interchangeable. Um, it, used to, it, it is used to test an expression to see if it's a valid number. Um, so we could use that in if condition if we wanted to see if some user input is valid. And based on whether it's valid or not, we might want to give the user a error message tell, telling them they have to have a valid number. All right, so let's just take a look at how we might test that. Here um, I have my alert, and inside the alert I'm testing an expression. Now remember, the alert is wonderful for testing expressions. You also can do this in um, Firebug. All right, so alert is not a number 100. Here again, you have to think about this because we have this concept of double negatives going on. All right, is 100 not a number? false. It is a number, okay? Okay, so if it wasn't a number, then is not a number would be true, but it's not a number, all right? So it's going to return false, all right? And this is an example of a Boolean value being returned. All I'm doing is put it, putting in the expression. It's either going to return true or false. All right, now let's take a look at the second alert statement. Is not a number, and I have my, the, the the one zero zero in close in quotations. Now remember, whenever we have something in quotations, that is technically a literal or a string. So now, is this a number? No, it's not a number. So it returns true, because is not, not a number tests whether it's true or not. And so the alert will come back true. I just didn't put it on the page. All right, a few more things I'd like to go over. The prompt method of the window object is introduced in this chapter. And here again, this is a very handy little method that allows us to gain user input. And it's always fun to use the prompt just to um, have some input that we can test and learn with. All right, so just like the alert, it is, the, it is a method of the window object. So we don't have to write window.prompt. We can just say prompt. Now the prompt method takes two parameters. The second parameter is optional. The first parameter, essentially what the prompt is, and you can see it here, it's similar to an alert. It's a little message box that will jump up at you when, it, when JavaScript executes the code. And it has a little text box. And it has some kind of a caption. So because it, it, it will re receive user input, we need some kind of a caption so that we can tell the user what type of input we want. So the first parameter is some kind of a text message. And as you see, I have used please enter your name. Now the second parameter is kind of like a little placeholder that would be in that text box. Here again, it's optional. All right. Now, the prompt also has two buttons, OK and Cancel. If the user types in something and says OK, what the prompt is actually doing is storing a value. So in order to utilize that value, we need to put that value in a variable. So if you notice, here I have var the answer. The answer is a variable that is holding the value that is being stored in this prompt. And if I wanted to test to see that it did come back correctly, I can use my friend the alert. Review of the document object model. And I do have examples in the sample code. And for this assignment, we'll be using the document object model. And if you remember, the whole point of this is that we access elements on the page by the value of their ID attribute. JavaScript reads from the top of the page down. So 
It doesn't know that something is in the body section until it gets there. So we want to hold back the JavaScript code from being executed until the whole document object model has been loaded so that JavaScript knows where these objects are, if we're going to be accessing these objects in our script. So we use the window.onload. This is the onload event. And what that essentially is saying, as soon as the page is loaded, we will run this anonymous function. And so here we have what is called the anonymous function. And whatever is inside the opening and closing curly braces will be executed when the page loads. So that is where your JavaScript code will be placed. So here's an example. Let's take a look at what's in the body section first. Here we have an empty P element with an ID equals XYZ. All right, so we are going to write something inside that opening and closing P tag. In order to do that, we need to identify where the P tag is. And we're going to do that by using its ID attribute, XYZ. So we have to wait until the page is loaded so JavaScript knows where ID equals XYZ is. All right, now we have a variable at the top of the page. Now the variable really doesn't have to be inside this function, but it can be. You generally want to put anything referencing the page inside this anonymous function. All right, so here we have var the reply equals hello world. Just doing this for purposes of demonstration. All right, window.onload equals function. There's our opening cur curly brace and our closing curly brace. Inside, document dot get element by ID. This is a method the get element by ID method of the document object. This is part of the DOM. All right, this is not traditional JavaScript. It came in later. All right, get element by ID. What ID? X, Y, Z. All right, so now we have just accessed or, or created a reference to the object. Now we have dot inner HTML. Dot inner HTML is a property. This is a JavaScript property of an object. And what the, what the inner HTML property is, it is whatever is inside the opening and closing tag of that object. It can be text and HTML tags, which is why we're using inner HTML, because you can put HTML there also. All right, so equals the reply. What is the reply? That is a variable holding the value hello world. So what we're doing is we're actually using that variable as the inner HTML property of this object, and when the page loads, you would see hello world inside that paragraph element.